Okay, thank you very much for the chance to speak here today. Uh, so, um, in the first slide, I'm going to show you a picture of the liver and where it's located in the body. It's a very special, important organ, crucial for clearing toxins from your body and making vital proteins, clotting factors. And if you look at where it's located, it receives its blood supply directly from the gut. So all the food and bugs that you have in your gut drain straight into the liver. And so we're increasingly realising that the liver has a very special immune system to allow it to deal with the blood that comes in from the gut. Um, and it's very good at being what we call tolerant, so it doesn't respond very well. Because if it did, it would be constantly responding to the things it's bombarded with. But this means that it's a very good place for viruses and other bugs and pathogens to hide out because the liver is so tolerant. And it also means it's quite an easy organ to transplant because the body won't reject it as well as it would with other organs. So we know quite a bit now about things that are bad for your liver. Um, I'm glad to see there's no alcohol being served here today. Um, fatty food and, and alcohol are big problems. And um, the good news is we also know some things which are good for your liver. Um, so it's increasingly been found that, that strong coffee and proper dark chocolate are actually very good for your liver. So you can compensate. Um, so liver disease is a really massive problem in the UK. Um, the quote here from the chief medical officer, it's a rising tide of liver disease that we have at the moment because of these, these combined problems of obesity, alcohol, and virus infections. Um, and then just this, um, this month, there's again big reports in the newspapers about the sharp rise in liver cancer resulting from liver disease from these same agents. Um, and uh, again here, headlines about hepatitis B. We're still, we're one of the few countries in the EU that's not vaccinating all our babies still for hepatitis B. Um, and this is a, a big problem, especially in London, where the numbers have more than doubled in the last decade. So here's a graph to show you just what a problem liver disease is in the UK. So we're looking here at um, the change in mortality since 1971 from different causes of disease. And whilst all these other types of uh, um, diseases are stable or even going down over the last 40 years, the, thing that's, the only thing that's really increasing dramatically in the last 40 years is deaths from liver disease. So this is a really big problem here in the UK. <clears throat> what, what kind of diseases are we seeing in the liver? Well, as I mentioned, alcohol and fatty liver disease are, of course, major increasing problems. We, we see the immune system can attack itself and cause autoimmune liver disease. And then the other major area is these pathogens or bugs that can hide out in the liver. So malaria, which is, of course, a huge problem in many parts of the world, has a stage in its life cycle where it hides out in the liver. And then hepatitis B and hepatitis C are viruses that specifically only can infect the liver. Tumours um, can develop as a result of all these diseases, but also many types of cancer will spread to the liver. So it's very common to get metastases of cancer coming into the liver. Again, perhaps related to the fact that the liver is such a tolerant place. And um, so as a result of all this, it's a very common organ for transplantation. And the Royal Free is one of the leading places in the country for liver transplantation. The good thing about all these liver diseases is that they, they do have a common course. And so by studying one of them, we can hopefully learn things that we can apply to other types of liver diseases. So no matter what the cause of the liver disease, we see a very similar pattern from all these different agents. So a healthy liver first reacts to uh, an insult of any sort by forming scar tissue and becoming fibrotic. Eventually, that scar tissue organizes itself into something called cirrhosis, at which point the liver really stops doing its normal um, job and can no longer uh, function properly. And ultimately, you can get liver cancer rising. So our work in, in the lab that I run focuses on hepatitis B virus. Um, but we hope to learn things from studying hepatitis B that will also apply to these other types of liver diseases that I've mentioned. So hepatitis B is a very small DNA virus. It can only infect the cells in the liver. And the liver disease that it causes is actually a result not of the virus itself, but of the immune system reacting against the virus. And that's why it's so important to study immunity in this disease. Hepatitis B remains a huge problem in the world. There is a preventative vaccine, but as I've mentioned, it's not being given 
um, effectively, and it's a difficult vaccine because you need, you need multiple doses. And so, uh, although in, in the future, hopefully, that will start to make an impact, we still have increasing numbers of liver-related disease from hepatitis B. We still have more than 350 million people in the world who are chronically carrying this virus and more than 600,000 deaths a year. And you can see the areas where it's most prevalent are sub-Saharan Africa and the Far East, um, but you know, it affects many parts of the world. And being here in London, we see a lot of this infection. <clears throat> so why do we want to study the immune response to hepatitis B? Well, we do have drugs to treat this virus, uh, similar to the drugs that we can treat HIV with. They can suppress it and reduce the complications pretty well, um, but they don't cure people. And so there's a huge problem with the uh, compliance with these drugs, the, the cost, the risk of side effects. And we think that the immune response could be harnessed to really control this virus because we see that most adults who get infected with hepatitis B actually do a very good job of controlling it through their own immune response. If you get infected as a baby or a child, you've got a much higher risk of chronic infection. But, but many adults get really good immune control of this virus, much better than, for example, HIV. So that gives us hope that we should be able to harness the immune response and try to mimic the successful immune response that we see in some of these adults in the people who've got chronic infection so that we can then terminate their therapy. Um, so a lot of the work that we and other labs do focuses on a particular cell in the immune system, the CD8 T cell, because these are the ones that we know are really critical for controlling viruses like hepatitis B. So here's a picture showing you the CD8 T cells trying to control hepatitis B. So hepatitis B is this little virus sitting inside your liver cells. And the CD8 T cells are clever immune cells that are able to recognize the virus even when it's inside a cell and can either then kill the infected cell or can produce different substances that can cure the cell of infection. So in patients who, who we see in the clinic who've managed to resolve the infection, we find that they've got plenty of these cells and they're doing a really good job at controlling the virus. Instead, in the patients who've got a high-level uh, chronic infection, what we find is that there's very few T cells left. And the T cells that are left are what we call exhausted. Um, so just like any of us, if we get given too much to do, um, we stop functioning properly, we can't do our job properly anymore. Um, this is what we see with the T cells, that they, they are fighting very high levels of this virus because pa patients are infected with incredibly high amounts of this virus, often from birth. So they've had decades of bombardment with this virus and they become exhausted. So what about other immune cells in the liver? Another cell type that's very prevalent in the liver is something called a natural killer cell. And this is a, another cell that can, in theory, fight viruses. So could this take over and do the job that the T cells are failing at? <clears throat> so um, we've been studying the NK cells in the liver, and we're fortunate in this disease that we can um, actually have access to liver samples um, so actually get to the site where the disease is going on, because patients have to have a little sample of liver tissue taken as part of their diagnosis and we can get a little fraction of that and study the immune cells coming right out of the site of, of the disease. Um, and here's a picture of the blood vessels that circulate through the liver which I really like because it, it shows you how unusual the circulation is in the liver. It's this really fine network of blood vessels that the cells have to pass through. And so the immune cells that can flow very freely through your blood actually get really held up in the liver and come into very close contact with different cells that they wouldn't normally encounter in, in that sort of uh, detailed, uh, prolonged way. And here's some um, staining that we've done from um, liver samples that have been taken from patients with hepatitis B. And what we found when we stained these cells here in the liver is that these two different cell types that I talked about the T cells that should be fighting the virus and the natural killer cells are actually coming really close together inside the liver, making very intimate contact. What we found then was when we did some experiments where we took away the NK cells, we started to recover more T cells. So um, I won't go into the details, it's a bit complicated, this assay, but we're basically looking at the number of T cells that can recognize and fight hepatitis B here. And we normally have very few of these cells in our patients, as I've mentioned already. When we take away the natural killer cells, we started to recover the T cells. And when we put them back in, we could see that they were killing the T cells. So what we concluded is that the um, natural killer cells, instead of helping to fight the virus, are actually killing off the T cells. 
so killing their brothers in arms. If you go on to the next slide. So this is a form of fratricide, which has been well described in, in uh, Romulus, was supposed to have killed Remus in this way. Um, instead of really helping each other out, these brothers are killing each other. So the question now is, can we do something to recover an effective immune response in these patients that we're, we're seeing with chronic hepatitis B? Can we somehow reverse their immune response and get it back to the healthy immune response that we see in people who've managed to control the virus? Is it possible to revive these exhausted T cells? And um, a number of groups and lots of actually big pharma companies are now really looking hard at, at ways of trying to revive these exhausted T cells. Um, one possibility from our work would be that you could try to stop this killing. So if you could stop the NK cells killing off the T cells by perhaps blocking a particular pathway that allows that killing, you might be able to recover more T cells. The problem is that the NK cells have other roles in the liver as well as these, uh, these capacity to kill the T cells. We think they can also have a protective role because they can kill these star-shaped cells, which are in which are important for um, causing fibrosis. And so if we, get, if we stop their killing activity, that could have bad effects as well as good effects. So as always with immunology, it's very complicated. So there's another approach I just briefly mentioned at the end, um, which I'm working on in a part of a big collaboration with Hans Staus here at the Royal Free. Um, and I think you'll hear more about this from, from Emma in a minute. And this is to actually say, if we can't re resuscitate the, the soldiers that are supposed to be doing the job, the T cells, if we can't give them the energy to fight anymore, shall we bring on some new ones instead? Um, and so the uh, approach here is to take um, T cells that don't normally fight against hepatitis B, because they don't have the right weapon, and give them the specific weapon, the specific T cell receptor that then allows them to start to be able to recognize hepatitis B again. Um, and this is something that we've just tried out as part of a big multi-center collaboration um, in one patient who had end-stage liver cancer, which is a, a common complication for hepatitis B. Um, and so um, we were able to in infuse this patient with T cells that recognize hepatitis B that was being expressed in the, in the metastases of the liver cancer in this patient and show um, uh, some initial recovery in terms of uh, reduction of viral load in this patient. So just to sum up what I've told you, liver disease is a huge and increasing killer um, in many parts of the world, including the UK. It's really important to understand more about the immunity in the liver, um, and by looking and uh, focusing on hepatitis B, we hope to provide insight for new treatments for this disease, but also for other types of liver diseases. We've um, shown that the T cells are really exhausted in hepatitis B, and part of the problem is fratricide, and um, we and many other groups are now working on new therapies to try and restore immune control, either by rescuing the existing T cells or by arming new ones. Okay, and that, that's my group here who've done all the work. Um, we're funded by the Wellcome Trust, the Medical Research Council. We have lots of collaborators, and uh, um, we are very grateful for all the staff and patients who help us to get the samples that are crucial for our work. Thank you.